Oh, it's finally over. <laughs> Just about a month ago, I decided to use Windows 11 exclusively on my primary desktop machine as well as my laptop in order to get a feel for the system, check out some of the updates, and so I could go ahead and give you guys a one month review of the system. And you may be asking yourself, why would I subject myself to such torture? And ultimately, it's because of what I do. A lot of people who use Linux absolutely despise Windows and won't touch it at all. But I, I feel like I need to have a really good understanding of what's going on, especially if I'm going to be recommending alternatives to Windows users. I actually need to have experience with whatever is the latest Windows platform to be able to make the content that I usually do. So for this review, what we're going to do is start with what I liked about it, and then we're going to wrap up with what I disliked about it. And actually, with this list I have right here, the, uh, there's actually quite a bit of things I do like about Windows. First of all, Windows snapping in Windows 11 is magnificent. I know on Windows 10 for this ultra-wide vertical monitor I have here, if I tried to put a window to one side, it would try to make it a skinny, long, vertical thing all the way down. They fixed that, so now it gives me the option to either split it in twos or threes with the ultra wide, so that is magnificent. And this is with the typical thing that we would get with the uh, four, we could put it up in the corner, off to the side, down on the bottom, or we could do the whole full screen thing going on. Overall, window snapping is awesome. And another thing that's really awesome, and we did mention this in my kind of first impressions video on Windows 11, is if we hover over this maximize button, it gives us a really nice kind of set of tiling layouts. So we go ahead and throw the window in like a long vertical here, and then you can see it gives me options for other windows I have open to go ahead and tile in the open spot. And if I don't want to do this, I could just click in a blank space and we are good to go. Now one thing that's kind of a negative with this, it's a hit or miss depending on the application. For example, if I go ahead and open up Firefox here and hover over that maximize button, you see nothing really comes up. But then if we open something like VirtualBox and hover over, it gives us those options. So that is something that is incredibly awesome. So let's close this out. Now, the second thing I really like about Windows 11 is the just overall appearance. It is a beautiful system. Even down to this little centered option on the taskbar here, even when I'm in Linux, primarily in a KDE Plasma environment, I always center my taskbar. Usually I kind of cut off the edges here so it's more like a dock that's not an option in this. But it's something I do anyway so I do like the option to do that. If you don't like it you could always just shift it over to the side and you're good to go. Now another thing that is incredibly noteworthy is all the different little animations within the system. Uh, the Verge put out an article titled Windows 11 is full of delightful detail. That does go over some of these different animations. And you'll notice this throughout the system, even down here on the bottom, if I go ahead and click the start button, you can see all the different ways the windows move. And like, if I go down to this little search thing, for example, hit that, you can see how it kind of spins around and it kind of colorizes itself. It, it's just beautiful. And there's so many little touches of detail like that throughout the system that really do give it some character. Another thing that is a vast improvement compared to Windows 10 is the start menu. I open this up here and they completely got rid of those ugly tile, live tile things, which is awesome. You have your pinned applications here, so you go ahead and customize this as you see fit. For example, if I go ahead and right click and let's unpin from start that little tips thing, it doesn't really change the size, so you are gonna want to fill it up with three rows, but it is cool. You can completely customize all these pinned applications here. And then we have recommended, and this generally makes sense. We have BitTorrent, FileZilla, uh, PIA, all the things that I've used recently are there that I can quickly get to. And then of course we have a little link to the account and then your power button. And if I hit that, it gives me the option to restart, shut down, and sleep. And just a little side note, uh, this was available in later versions of Windows 10, but now it doesn't really force you to update your system. You can just shut down or shut down and update. Same with restart. It gives you the option so you don't have that frantic trying to get your computer to turn on while it's updating situation like ha what happened to me a couple different times in Windows 10. Now another thing that's kind of new is up here this little search thing. This is more of like a little shortcut link if I actually click on it. It just opens up the search panel and then here you could go ahead and search your system. The searching works pretty good even for online things if I do like weather and then my zip code and then go over to web which it does it automatically because it's not going to find any results on my system. 
it pulls up pretty good web results so I could go ahead and see what's going on and you can search the web it's Bing so it's a hit or a miss depending on if you actually like it or want to use it but you saw it, as I searched it brought up the weather app overall search works very well in this system and especially or specifically looking for individual files directories things like that now another thing that is uh, new at least when it involves the UI changes is the Microsoft Store now there are things I like and do not like about it. The overall UI and visual changes, it's beautiful just like the rest of the system. And I am really looking forward to when they integrate Android applications. I'm gonna be doing a separate video on that when they do release that feature. So I am looking forward to that. But overall, the actually using it to get software, especially if you compare it to something like Linux. In Linux, you open up a terminal, sudo apt-get filezilla, for example, and you're gonna get the software. In this, if I go FileZilla, it's going to bring up a bunch of generic garbage FTP clients that I'm not going to want to use, or like FTP user guides, just some silly things like that. So with this, you're still going to need to go on the web browser, download an EXE, and install it. So there really has not been much improvement with that. But like I said, really looking forward to those Android applications. And this is kind of taking us to some of the things I didn't like about the system. Granted, I know this is a developer preview. They have still quite a few months before they are coming out with their official release. So I am going to be a little bit nicer than I would if this were to be the official release. But there are definitely some bugs in this system. If I went down here and opened up like the volume, for example, or even this calendar with all these notifications, Explorer EXE would just completely crash and restart. And I kept doing that and I had to restart the computer. It was just kind of a hassle, but it's in developer preview, so I can't be too upset. Another thing is my OBS during live streams would constantly disconnect and reconnect. Reconnection successful. So I did drop connection for a sec. And to fix that, I had to lower my bitrate down way lower than I needed to in a Linux operating system. So hopefully whatever was causing that is going to be resolved as the updates go forward. And then the last thing and probably most obvious thing if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time is it's simply not Linux. <laughs> First thing, it doesn't really have anything to do with Linux or Windows, but... When I'm working in Windows, for some reason, I am incredibly disorganized. I have a really bad habit of dragging and dropping things to the desktop. If I just go into here, for example, and open up my videos folder, I mean, I kind of organized my projects, but you can see, like, a, but this is my own fault. Part of the problem here is, like, how they have quick access and things like that. It's just not a file structure I'm used to, but that's... A personal thing nothing against Windows in that regard but with that to use this developer preview I had to enable all the different tracking and diagnostics data and all kinds of stuff so it's completely full of trackers I know they're watching everything that I'm doing but that's just one of the things that comes with it um, if you're at all privacy conscious you should probably use Linux and being that it's not free and open source there's probably things in the code that aren't too good. I just have a real strong bias to free and open source software as many of you do. And for the price, because you either have to already have Windows 10 or purchase a Windows 10 license, and that's anywhere from one to $200 if you don't find some gray market key somewhere. I know for my particular version, if I go over here and I go to the settings and I go over to activation, you can see I'm running Windows 11 education and that's really the only reason why I was able to do this on my main machine is because I got it through my school because they're just giving out Windows education keys like it's candy. So overall, I'm actually fairly impressed other than the obvious cons of using a Windows-based system. It's absolutely beautiful. The icons are pretty. Um, I haven't had much performance issues like gaming and everything is completely fine. I've had no issues other than some general bugs, glitches. Uh, just before I recorded this video, I emptied the recycle bin and the icon disappeared and I restarted the system and it was there again but again developer version those are things that you're gonna have to expect howdy everybody sorry to intrude on your viewing experience but there's another bug that just happened while i'm editing this video you're watching now and it is quite annoying here check this out if i go down to my file explorer drag that in over here that uh, this is all i get 
uh, I get access to absolutely nothing unless if I like manually type in videos and then it will take me to that directory but then there's like nothing here if I hit this PC it's working on it so th this is fun to deal with but with all of that said I am extremely happy that this month is over because I went ahead and asked all of you guys on Twitter what I should switch to now instead of going to what I would normally do, which is like an Endeavor or just some other Arch-based system. So I'm gonna be going with the latest version of Fedora with the latest version of Gnome, and then reporting back to you guys in about a month with my full in-depth review on Fedora. So now I am really looking forward to there being a lack of, why are you using Windows comments on the bottom of a lot of the videos, things like that. <laughs> so if I were to rank Windows, well, all the Windows versions, um, Windows 7 is still definitely the best in my opinion, but then this actually falls right under Windows 7. I think to date, this is probably the second best Windows release there is. So it probably goes Windows 7, Windows 11, Windows 10 was okay. Windows 98 was really good. I'm biased. That was one of my first ones. Uh, then Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows Millennium, and then Windows 8. <laughs> With all that said, I do hope you guys subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Like this video if you did. Leave a comment down below letting me know if you're going to use Windows 11 at all, whether if that be temporarily on a second boot drive. Uh, full-time or not at all because Windows is the definition of evil. Whatever your opinion is, leave it down below. With all that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.